We're in a game of League and I'm about to show you how to win your games as Ash. What is up guys? My name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we are playing in none other than the Frost Queen Ash. And this champion is absolutely freaking amazing. And as I've said numerous times before, this is the champion in my opinion that as a new player, you should be picking her up and learning ADC by playing her because she's the best way of doing so. And even as a mediocre or an advanced player or even someone who's an expert, I think it's really good sometimes to go back and play Ash because she can ensure that your fundamentals are in place, which is extremely important uh, as an ADC player because she can really teach you how to position correctly, how to kite, how to do all of the cool stuff that you're supposed to do as an ADC. Anyways, what we are going to be doing in this video is that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Ash from like basically the very button. It's going to be like early, mid and late game breakdown. I'm going to teach you guys exactly what you want to be doing, what you want to be thinking about and how to play this champion in the different phases of the game. Hopefully, I'll be able to also do it in a way where you guys find it somewhat entertaining and we're going to have fun with it along the way. Um, so, yeah. Well, further ado, I think we're just kind of going to get started and get into it. Uh, I'm a little unsure what my Morgana is doing at this point. She's warding up blue, apparently. Anyways, before we do get too much into it, then if you do enjoy this video or find it helpful or something along those lines, then I would actually greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button for me. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe down below. And if you want to hang out with me live, then go to twitch.tv dash mips underscore live. Anyway, now I'll focus on a little bit more on the game and start explaining to you guys what you want to be doing. So our beginning here of the early game was kind of horrible because Magana was not present. She went up here to War Blue uh, for reasons that are unknown at this point. Um, but at least we know that Blue is not getting stolen, I guess. But I feel like we already knew that. So I like I don't really see why. Maybe she saw something I didn't. Uh, it's anyone's guess at this point. Anyway, that put us in a situation where level 2 power spike is out of reach. It's not something that we'll be able to get. Uh, and for that reason, they got and we had to kind of play safely in lane and play back. And there, for that reason, Senna is now in a position where she's pretty far ahead in CS. Anyway, I see my jungler coming up behind. So I'm actually going to go ahead. I'm just going to all in here. And it should be a pretty easy kill. I'm going to pop my potions. I'm going to stay a little bit back. I will try and follow along. I'm not going to go for a flash here. Because it's simply not necessary. Not unless I really want to like steal the kill. Which, let's be real. We want, We really want that. Oh, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. So, we're going to make sure that they get the kill. And I was just sitting on my flash in case. Uh, if need be. But now we still have it for a later point. Anyway, let's talk about how to actually play this champion in the early game and what you want to be doing. So, first of all, uh, with Ash, you are very, very, very immobile. Meaning that you don't have any kind of dashes or anything. So, if you miss position, you're going to get caught and you're going to get... Yeah, you're probably going to you're probably gonna die, to be honest. Uh, that's how it goes on Ash. And this is why, as I've said so many times... That she's great at teaching you the fundamentals of playing ADC. Because imagine it this way. And I've said this before. But if you want to play. Let's say you want to play Lucian. Then Lucian has a really good dash. But if you start out playing ADC having this dash. You'll get used to like positioning it incorrectly. And then using this dash to get out of like a, a bad situation. Let's imagine that you play Ash first. You learn proper positioning and then somebody tries to get to you. Then you have this extra tool at your disposal and you can even start using it more offensively and all of this stuff. So this is why I, I preach so much that a champion like Ash is extremely good for you, uh, both as a new player, but also as an advanced one to go back every now and then and ensure that your fundamentals are down. Like, as I've said I would say that if I had to like t t compare Ash to another champion, it would be that Ash is like the, the Garen version of bot lane. She's like, everybody knows when they can duel her. 
but oppositely if you disrespect her she's also gonna duel you really easily like the thing is if you're ahead on ash like if they overstep their boundaries you hit them with one normal auto attack or one w and you're just gonna be running them down holy we're actually getting a lot of help from our jungler here i want to make sure that we do i'm not gonna be able to kill this guy but still do have my flash i'm not gonna be going for a flash play here i i'm just kind of sitting back on it uh i feel like they are overplaying here and i can actually kind of punish this might have to flash but no 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 we're fine we're fine we're fine the thing i'm not that great about here is we're losing quite a bit of farm the wave is pushing i'm gonna e so we can see whether or not he's in here so he's actually not here anymore i'm gonna ward this up start removing vision and we're going to have to keep an eye on the scuttle. We might have to help our Lee. He's been so kind to us. We better be kind back, right? Uh, so we might have to... Alright, right here. Bard is running the wrong way. And they're very low in here. Very, very low. I'm not going to... I'm not going to flash for this. Because I can see that R is going to go in there. But quite honestly, she should not have gone this deep. Like, we could just wait and, like, take it slow. And just wait for cooldowns. And I could double you down. It was total greed for her to go in and go for the kill. But anyways. Uh, this is all good. It's a decent start for us. This is, like, team deathmatch constantly. I'm not going to run up there. For now. Maybe I should, actually. Okay. Alright, that would have been a huge steal. I honestly, maybe I should have gone there. Maybe I could have saved him. All right. Anyway, I, I'm sorry we got interrupted a little bit in what we are supposed to do. But laning on, face on Ash is basically that you want to sit in lane, safe, farm as safely as you can. And then you want to sit and W the enemy as often as you can. So you want to hit your, like, poke them down using, using your W. Uh, this is extremely good because you outrange pretty much most champions using this. Additionally, against champs where you have an advantage, you can go up, you can W, and then follow it instantly up with an auto attack. The reason why you want to do so is because of the fact that you deal more damage whenever your target is frozen. So it's just like, it's really, really nice. And also your Q, your Ranger's focus is what we call an auto attack reset. Auto attack resets are super cool because it basically just means that when you pop this ability, then you, you fire off an auto attack right away. Meaning that if you just fired an auto attack and then click your Q, then you actually gain a full auto attack. So whenever we do fight, we want to make sure that before we pop our Ranger's Focus or Q, then we do an auto attack on our target. That's very important because you actually gain a full auto attack. It's enormous. And not only that, because you got that first auto attack in there, then if the target wasn't already frozen then it they, then they do be get become frozen by your auto attack and then you actually deal more damage so yeah it's just like it's all around such a good thing to do and something that you do want to keep in mind right here i might almost like the way they're playing here i could probably do like a 1v2 outplay but i'm not gonna do it just because it's a little too greedy but we probably could have done it with like an arrow anyway so we're in laning phase, farm safely, stay back, and just sit and poke with your W. If the enemy walks off to try and... Uh, let's get this. I'm not going to go in. I feel like this is kind of too cheesy. I'm going to fire off an arrow so we can see what they're doing. All right, nobody's in there. She just wants the blue. Cool. Good to know. All right. So, let's talk a little bit about some of the counters that are here for Ash. So, one of the things with Ash is she struggles with, like, heavy burst champions. They would, this would be things like Draven, Lucian, Tristana. Like, things like this is something that Ash really, really struggles with in lane. And the reason for this is quite simple, that they're better at all ins. The way you do counter playing against these kind of things is doing exactly what you want to do against pretty much everything else. And that is poking your enemies down, using your uh, your W, and then following up with an auto attack. 
if you can. Against Tristana, it's super risky to go for the auto attack uh, until you've poked her down far enough. And the reason for this is quite simply that an auto attack onto her means that you are going into her jump range, her rocket jump range. And a good Tristana will punish you really quickly by doing so uh, if, if you're somewhat in an equal state in the game and you haven't poked her down to a point where she's like in an unhealthy state. So this is something we, we want to keep in mind when playing Ash. that if you're playing against something that's stronger than you, you want to try and respect it as much as you can. And then just poke them down. Once you have them at kind of an unhealthy uh, AHB level or maybe their support goes away and you're able to like kind of like just catch them off guard, then that's what we'll do. I can actually go for like a cheesy play right here. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. I hope that uh, Magana would uh, would see the arrow coming and uh, would follow up with the snare. But I actually just messed it up for her instead. Anyway, I think right here we might... Nah, you know what? We'll actually stick for a little while. We use a potion to gain some mana. I just want to sit for the extra 200 gold so we can get the Kraken Slayer. This is like a huge item for us. But as you can see, we're playing quite safely. Uh, and what you want to be doing with your uh, your your vision is, you, of course, when you don't know where their jungler is, you want to you want to try to uh, to use the uh, right here. You can see we do the auto. I'm just gonna do as much as I can here. I'm not probably not gonna kill any of them, but it's gonna make them a lot more unhealthy. You can see how we just poke them down. Punish them a little bit here and there. There we go. Gonna push this in. Gonna get that arrow onto them. Get the auto attack. You can see how how we like slowly just keep pushing them down. And at this point, they're getting really scared. They're like, okay, uh, this is actually becoming really dangerous. Uh, so I think Senna most likely back here. Our other lanes, lanes are fortunately win winning quite quite heavily. Uh, which is going to, of course, make this game a little easier than expected. But we'll try to uh, to still make sure that we show off. Wow, can't really miss those. Uh, to still show off kind of the potential of this champion. So as soon as you do hit level 6 on something like Ash, then things become really, really fun. Because you have your old, which is your arrow that you can stun cross map. And this can be extremely entertaining because it can be super tilting for the enemy that you just pop this old and fire it in their face and they just get stunned. It's really hard to deal with. Uh, the cross map ults, you have to kind of like really think about whether or not it's worth it because they are difficult to hit. I'm not saying don't ever fire them, but think about whether or not you do need that ult for your own lane. And then try and keep it for like a good engage for your support to follow up on or for your jungler. So right here, I see this guy. I'm thinking that she's actually gonna... Wow, I actually missed that. I wanted to try and see if I could hit her as she run past right there. Because that was my expectation that she would run that way. Alright, we're gonna go ahead. We'll get this farm. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a Master Yi. And Master Yi is a really, really scary champ for us as Ash. Because our slow, as long as he has ult up, doesn't work on him. So we want to make sure that we just kind of hang back till that ult is gone. Right here, we're going to use our kiting. He is going to... He has his Q ready, so I can't actually beat him right now. If I go in, I die. What I can do is I can stay at this max range and I can see if I can W him. Uh, but I am afraid that uh, that he's going to do... Whoop. He's going to go all in on me or go for a flash play or something like that. So we're sticking pretty far back. I'm not going to be able to do too much here. Except I can stay behind my support. So I want to push this way forward before we move into the mid to late game. There we go. Let's grab this. Uh, see if we can get these down. We'll just go really quickly for back here. This will allow us to finish our boots. I'm pretty unhealthy and I'm expecting Yi to be close, which he actually is. Um, so that's a really good time for us to back out. We'll get ourselves a control ward as well and a blue ward. The blue ward can be really nice on Ash, especially because you can pop that one 
to to get vision of somebody who's maybe backing in a bush that you can fire off your old and catch them off guard or something along those lines right here i'm just gonna fire off my old because i know that i'm for sure gonna hit at least one target there are so many targets right on this line so firing off an old is just a secured way for me to oh i'm actually gonna die here here comes the Masi. We need that ult to be over. Okay, he's actually not diving. Well, that was a surprise. Usually, a Masi, you will just go... Like, <laughs> he will go all the way deep in and go for it. Well, I'm actually a little happy that they're getting back into the game. Especially as we're playing against a comp that is not necessarily uh, like Ash's cop of tea. Because this is going to show you kind of how to play this champion and why it's so important to learn kind of the fundamentals. So right here, I am not going to be going uh, anywhere close down there. I know for a fact that, like, they already got the Drake, right? So no point going down and looking at it. Instead, we'll go up here. We'll get the red buff. I see a huge wave in bot side. I probably should have gone instantly there instead. My rotation here is not perfect. That's for sure. All right. So we should have gone bot side. We're going to lose a little too much here. Uh, I'm going to try and ping Annie to go or Ari to go bot side if possible. She's not gonna go there. All right, we'll 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 take this. I'll go down there. Let's make sure that we get that turret. I don't have ult for another 15 seconds. All right, we're not gonna get any of this. And remove this ward. I just want to check that I don't get flanked while running down here. It doesn't appear that way. If he's here, he's down there because I actually didn't hit my arrow there. All right. But yeah, let's just really quickly summar summarize the, the laning phase. The laning phase on Ash is quite simple. Poke them down using your W, play safe, get farm, and just like as soon as you are in an upper hand situation, meaning that you have more health than them and you, you can go for a good engage, then you want to make sure that you W auto attack Q. So this way you optimize your damage because the W, if you get that off first, you're going to start off by getting your, your W on cooldown, meaning that you might be able to cast it more than once throughout the engage. Uh, you get your auto attack off so you can do the auto attack reset on your Q. And this is just going to put you in such a good spot overall. Like you already pumped out so much damage. So now we're actually moving officially into what we call the mid game. And this is basically meaning that the bot tower is down and we're starting to go more into this phase of things where we're fighting the, uh, let's go for a wit's end here. Uh, we're fighting, we're, we're kind of fighting more for general objectives around the map, meaning that Drake's Rift, Herald's Barons, and generally like grouping up for objectives is more common. Um, so for these objectives, you, generally speaking, want to be sitting mid lane and you want to be telling your, your support. We can actually go for an arrow here. It's going to be a full stun. It should be a free kill. Okay, we're actually not going to get him down. He just flashed out last second. Uh, but this is generally where, where the, the, like, you want to want to go mid lane with your support. And then you want your, your mid laner to actually go to the side lane. The reason why you want to do this is because if they go side lane, then that means you and your support can be closer to both the top side objectives and the bot side objectives. Whereas if you're if we're sitting in bot side, there's really far up to help with Baron, which is of course terrible. Uh, that was not pretty. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna flash for this. I don't feel like I'm. The thing is, I could flash, and we probably would be able to uh to catch this senna but if i do that i won't have this flash for oh whoa 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 then i won't have th this flash for uh getting out of a tight situation like this one. Oh whoa whoa yeah i'm dead all right we tried we tried i tried pinging for help uh magana didn't want to stop her back to fire off a snare <laughs> i guess that happens anyway uh, I feel like that was uh, that was just a, yeah, a hard situation to do anything about. What I should have done is, of course, I should have fired off my E going into an unknown field. I kind of put myself into a trap. But for the mid game, if you can make your, your mid laner go to the side lanes, then you want to sit in the mid lane. If they are stubborn, then you, of course, have 
to go to the side lane because yes it's not optimal for you to sit in the bot lane or the top lane but it is better for you to sit there than you guys sitting three people in the mid lane sharing all the xp and gold so if you go side lane you're going to be able to pick up all of this gold and xp by yourself uh if your side laner doesn't want to rotate but it's ideally you want your mid laners to actually go to the side lanes and this is also what you generally speaking will be seeing if you watch some pro games you'll see them do this uh because it is actually quite essential for the game but a lot of mid laners don't really understand why that is and they think you're just greedy and they want all the kills and gold for themselves and they're close to everything so they want to sit in there <laughs> yeah so i hope that kind of makes sense all right so now that we're here in the mid game the mid game is very much like the late game or mid and late game on ash it's very similar all around you want to be playing oh, holy i actually messed up and walked into that uh it's very similar on ash it's actually pretty identical you just want to be playing around objectives i'm actually not going to go for this they're going to mess this up god dang it ah uh, this drake might kill my teammate or not actually whoop and this is where he i'm not going to follow the black shield will allow me to go through there but not the next one all right so we can try and see if we can get this down we do have to uh Oh, we already had a control ward. Wow. Good job. <laughs> All right. We should be able to get this down before Mastiki comes down here, hopefully. But we got to run pretty quick after. Because as he comes down here, he might become like fly in like Superman with these old, which is quite honestly not that great of a feeling when you're playing Ash. Like Ash really struggles with something like a Mastiki if he like if your team doesn't snare him or do something to him like the only tool i have against you is my old and that can be very easily countered by masayi clicking his q if he does it at the right time so you have to cast it like really early uh in order to actually deal with him all right so we're gonna grab this we're getting pretty close to finishing our wits end might have to help here should be okay cool but yeah for the mid to late game, the way we want to play the game is we want to try and stay as close to the mid lane as possible if we can make our, our mid laner rotate. And then we want to all the time kind of think about what is the next objective. And we want to make sure that we're present for these objectives, but we don't want to mindlessly fight. We only want to fight if there are objectives. And if we can evaluate that, or not only, if there are cases where you just like purely uh we're gonna get that q in onto vigar i feel like that was actually the right choice nice all right we did get this guy uh i tried to actually time it somewhat with uh with master Yi using his q because then i could hit vigar in the background which is both going to be a longer stun and him sitting there firing w's uh and q's into our face is actually worse than dealing with like a uh, master Yi at this point even though master Yi is of course very painful all right, we're going to grab this. I don't think we should push any further on... I mean, maybe we, if we can get this guy down, we could actually go a little bit further. But it is starting to get a little risky. There's a huge wave in top. I actually rather pull back now. Than going for this deep engage. Because what they're going to do now is most likely the other... Like, this engage is going to prolong. Then Masayi and the others are going to spawn. And they're going to run into their face. And we're going to die. Instead, I'd rather remove all of this gold. And this is something you need to think about even as an ADC. It's like, okay, how do you get the most gold? And what is the, the like, the, I don't, I don't, I almost want to say the safest play. Um, of course, you want to back up around your teammates. But if you can see that they're doing something that you just know is going to go south, then go do something that, that puts you in a state to make up for it down the road. And that's what I did here. In my opinion going for what they did here was way too risky it was that like it was there was such a big chance that going behind that tower would mean that we would all die then they would just rush baron and we would sit in a really bad scenario and it's pretty much what's going to happen now because mas or lee sin just got caught so they could potentially go for this baron if they're smart here they could potentially do that Anyway, when we're doing team fighting on Ash, it's very, very important that we think about what kind of tools the enemy has. 
Yeah. Okay. So he had, he had flash as well. Otherwise, we would have gotten him alone. But yeah, this is exactly why Master Yi can be super painful for an, an Ash. Like, <laughs> we did do whatever we could to get out of that, that, that situation. But yeah, he had flash as well. He had everything. He just flew into our face. Um... And dive those under turret. And it was... I guess it was somewhat... Like... This guy is like... Just going ham. And they could have taken a Baron. They could have done so much other stuff than going for this. So yeah. Like in retrospective... Maybe I shouldn't have walked into that. Like right around that corner. But I honestly didn't expect him to be there. Because it didn't really make sense. But... For him I guess not making sense. Kind of worked out. <laughs> But yeah, for the mid to late game, or for, for the team fighting, you want to be playing the back line. You want to stay as far back as possible. And then you want to kite. Kiting on Ash is so important since we don't have any mobility. Like, we don't have any dash. We don't have anything like that. We only have our auto attacks that slow, our W that slow, and we have our ult that stuns. So what we instead want to do is we constantly want to, like, kite people. We want to make sure that they're slowed and that we're, we're moving faster than they are away from them while dealing damage. This is the way you want to be playing it. And this is the, what you need to be thinking about. Right here going, we can, we're probably going to be chasing around for this guy. I don't think whether or not it's super worth it, but I can fire out my ult. I should be able to hit him right there. There we go. As should be a free kill and we can convert this into a drake. So very, very nice. And this is like with Ash, you have a, kind of a, some different ways of using your arrow. First of all, you can use your your old to just uh, hit whatever. But your second option is pretty much. Whoop! We need to uh, we need to get this E down pretty quickly. Like E is 100% the priority here. We use the auto attack Qs. All right, so that's really nice. We can go directly for the Baron here. That is definitely what we want to be doing. There we go. But against this comp specifically, we also want to try and stay as far back as possible. And we want to try and keep like Ormagana. And if you're playing against something like this, you want to keep somebody with some CC, like some crowd control, like a stun or a snare in front of you. So they can stop Master Yi before he gets to you. This is quite important because if he ever gets to you, you're kind of screwed. Uh, like you can see, we did more or less a perfect try to get away on Yi over here. And we still died because he just, if he has flash too, like there's nothing we can do. Um, and that's kind of the, what you want to be thinking about when taking down something like a Master Yi specifically, then you need to think about the fact that Master Yi can... Like, you want to try and see if he's not too fed for this. This is only if he's not too fed. If you cannot hit him before he reaches you or before he gets in his Q range, then you actually want to wait till after his Q so you can Q him. Even though the stun is going to be very short, it's going to give you, like, a little breathing room to, like, run a little further away. And hopefully, if he used his ult very early, the ult might be over sooner and you'll, you'll get a chance to get behind the turret or do something. But yeah, with Ash, stay as far back as possible in team fights, and you always, always on Ash want to kill the closest target. You never go like you will never. If let's say that we're sitting here, I will always if if Magana was my enemy, I will always go on her if she's closest. If somebody else gets closer to me, I'm gonna swap target, especially if that target starts moving back. Like I'm not gonna chase down a target on Ash unless there are no other targets. And the reason is simply that if you do the like if you chase after a target, you will die. Uh, like they will turn on you. And that is that is like 100 percent Like Ash is not tanky. Ash has no mobility. You only have your flash to kind of recuperate whatever mistakes you make. And even without mistakes, you need your flash. Right here, I'm hurrying back up behind my Lee. I see I see the uh, whoop. This might not be so bad. I'm gonna fire off my ult. We're gonna back out. We see Yi on our side. I really don't like the fact that he's allowed to flank us like this, but we did get a free kill though. And Set is going way too deep. If the enemy actually knew where we were uh, or where the rest of the team were, they would just turn on this guy. 
All right, so now we have an upper hand. So we want to try and push. Uh, there's pretty far till next Drake, but we do need to get that next Drake. And for me, I see Master Yi over here. So what I'm doing is I'm positioning as far away from him as humanly possible. Like, this is what I want to do. And you can see, again, I'm choosing the closest target. I'm going to flash. I'm going to make sure we get this. Mm, maybe the flash is a little too much, but it is going to work out. And you can see we're all the time trying to stay as far back as possible on Ash. We're using our old to take out essential targets. So either we use it on essential targets or we're cho choosing to just fire it into a, the mass of them when we feel like we have a pretty good range so the targets are just stunned for longer. Or we're just like kind of using it as a peel. So that's kind of the things you want to be doing on her. And just mid to late game, quite simple. Play around with your team. Never ever walk alone because it is for sure going to kill you. And then, yeah, like just learn how to kite so you out attack move out attack move use your w off cooldown in these fights and uh yeah it's it's she's quite a simple champ but even though she's her kid is simple she's actually quite difficult to 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 master because she really emphasizes you to really be good at the fundamentals of playing the champion so yeah i hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video or found it entertaining or something along those lines if you did, then I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you're new in here, make sure to go down below, click that subscribe and uh, join into our awesome community. And lastly, if you want to hang out with me and stream, then yeah, go to twitch.tv mips underscore live. I would love to hang out with you guys. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. As always, stay awesome, have fun and take it easy, guys.